The K-pop world has always been intriguing, and it's time that we talk about it before they become too toxic. Do you want to hear surprising truths and jaw-dropping realities that surround your favorite K-pop idols in the industry that never sleeps? Brace yourselves, because we're about to uncover the 30 most hard-to-swallow facts about K-pop. Here we go. 30. Slave Contracts The K-pop industry is most notorious for this, and they'll never get away with it. A slave contract is a long-term, often unfair agreement that is exploitative and extremely restrictive between idols and their agency. Additionally, trainees who violate these contracts face extremely severe financial consequences. Under the terms of the agreement, management is responsible for paying the training of future idols. Agencies handle most of the financial issues, from housing and living bills to classes for singing and dancing. But this also implies that they have the power to sculpt and mold trainees to fit their own desires. This means that companies control idols' behavior, lifestyle, and love lives, among other things, as a compensation. Sadly, they create two hectic schedules that everyone barely has time to sleep. For example, three members of TVXQ sued their management company, SM Entertainment, in 2009, alleging that the agency's 13-year contract was exploitative since it provided them with little to no revenues, in addition to being incredibly long and restricted. 29. Strict Dating Rules It's so hard to see idols dating these days. It is most probably because their fans get so crazy when they fall in love, like a living nightmare. It is widely acknowledged that K-pop agencies have very strict and unbending dating policies. While certain groups outright forbid dating, others have stringent policies on it and will take drastic steps, like dismissing someone if the guidelines are broken. Remember Hayuna and Idon? They were under the management of Cube Entertainment and made waves by disclosing their relationship during the promotion of a collaborative new album. Not much to our surprise, Cube Entertainment also issued a statement indicating that they were leaving the agency, a sign of how strict dating regulations are. When we manage artists, mutual trust and faith are our top priorities, the statement stated. We have determined that the trust is irreparably damaged, hence we are removing the two from their company. Sully, another idol who experienced extreme pressure, sadly experienced this. Shoi Jinri came under fire when she revealed her love life to the world. She allegedly requested severe punishment from her management organization, SM Entertainment, after being the target of cyberbullying, but to no avail. This greatly affected her as K-pop fans know it today. 28. Forced Diets As an idol, your physical appearance is very important. We know it may sound harsh, but that's just how it works. K-pop idols are subjected to intensive diet plans to fit a well-defined beauty standard. Even the most well-known celebrities, such as Yu and Schumann, have given in to the pressure to fit the predetermined body type. Throughout that process, they followed strict food regimens that included eating sweet potatoes for meals or drinking a lot of coffee. Body shaming is a very frequent practice in the South Korean music industry, despite the fact that it is a really horrible behavior. The unspoken standards that characterize their roles and positions are the male idol's sleek-cut jawlines and the female star's tiny waists. Diets that are on the verge of illness are the quickest route to rapid results. What's worse is this. Mina from Gugudan stopped eating and subsisted solely on two bottles of sparkling water till she hit her lowest weight of 42 kilograms. An eating problem is the result of having such a bad relationship with food, and many celebrities have suffered from it. Do you see how unhealthy this is? 27. Intense Gym Routines Apart from skipping meals, this is another ugly truth K-pop idols have to face. Agencies can gain control over artists' bodies through strict food plans but adding rigorous workouts and gym schedules to already demanding choreographies might exacerbate the situation. Wei, a dancer for Crayon Pop, 
said that these routines can get challenging at times. We used to dance for several days with four kilograms, 8.8 pounds, of sandbags on our feet. Our instructor intended for us to become accustomed to the sandbags so that our dances would appear lighter without them. K-pop idols are typically required to train for 8 to 10 hours every day with little time off. Who works that long without any rest? They're bound to get hungry and it really won't be pretty. Put on a diet, such a body-breaking regimen combined with one or two meals a day is upsetting. The results of this kind of training are frequently observed when performers experience nausea, fainting, and trouble breathing during live performances. 26. Plastic Managers Who would have thought the closest person to you would wish ill on you? Beware, managers can ruin your career. The body of Korean actress Jeon Jae Yeon was discovered in her residence in 2009. She had passed away because, as she put it in her note, she was pimped out to every CEO she encountered and was unable to continue. She wrote that her manager had been pressuring her to serve influential people. He would severely beat her if she attempted to refuse. During their raid of her agency's office, the police discovered a concealed sex area behind a paneled wall on the third level of the building. To amuse VIPs, they had a brothel in their office, where they were using their stars as entertainment. Although it wasn't an isolated instance, it made headlines in South Korea. In order to progress their careers, two-thirds of Korean girls working in entertainment claim they have faced pressure to have relationships with politicians or executives. This is the standard operating procedure in the Korean entertainment industry. In Korea, as one anonymous female put it, you have to know men in order to work. 25. The Dark Side of Plastic Surgery Sometimes, idols from the same group look alike, and it's not just you who thinks that way. In South Korea, plastic surgery is so commonplace that people hardly even glance at this one. By the end of their 20s, half of all Korean women undergo plastic surgery, with the majority undergoing double eyelid procedures to mimic the appearance of European eyes. The majority of celebrities have contracts that mandate plastic surgery. Not just women receive that in their contracts, though. It's a typical occurrence in Korea for both men and women to pick up a contract and read a condition stating that they would need a nose job if they wanted to attend K-pop boot camp. Few would argue against the order to entirely reconstruct her face into the ideal of perfection. In an attempt to write an expose on it, a writer spoke with as many celebrities as she could, but claimed that most of them had no idea why she was concerned. The majority of would-be celebrities stated, getting more attractive is a good thing. 24. Queer baiting. Queer baiting has been a huge problem these days. It has emerged as a widely used marketing strategy in the K-pop sector. Queer baiting only ambiguously displays the presence of non-heterogeneous individuals and representations in an attempt to win over supporters of queer narratives. In order to maintain viewer attention, it does not explicitly affirm or deny the presence of such depiction. Concerns over the strategy have increased as a result of its exponential growth over the previous few years. Its use of queerness as a marketing ploy not only infuriated the LGBTQIA community, but it also drew criticism for fetishizing its innate qualities without raising any awareness at all. You can be whoever you want to be, but faking your way through stardom is just plain cruel. One strategy used by agencies to draw attention and views from their target demographic is the incorporation of soft masculinity and shipping culture. This has also given idols a stereotypical demeanor that they are expected to display to the world, whether or not it makes them comfortable. 23. Idols are broke. Contrary to popular belief, idols do not have money. A K-pop artist is unlikely to make any money unless he gets a big hit song. Most of them survive on microwave noodles while living in a communal dorm with their bandmates. Even famous people have it. According to a Girls' Generation member, she had to attend boot camp for 11 years before she could support herself financially. She had to rely entirely on her parents' generosity throughout that time. 
even then some people don't make money. When the band Block B said that their agency hadn't paid them in more than a year, they were among the top acts in the nation. To date, their parents have not received a single dime back from the $65,000 they were ordered to pay the agency. Those contracts are totally sneaky and they sign it because it's their dream. The vocalists typically have to do things they don't want to do in order to make money. Before they gave in to their agency and began creating erotic music videos where they flashed their thongs and let milk drip suggestively out of their mouths, the band Stellar was barely breaking even and had to share one dish of food between four people at a meal. One of the group members gave an explanation for her acceptance of her fate, saying, When we didn't have skin exposure, nobody even knew we released a new song. There is no response if it is not provocative. 22. Violence is inevitable. Hal Yu is a dangerous world. An aspiring celebrity still has a fair possibility of being sexually assaulted by her manager, even if she values her virtue so much that she refuses to be pimped out and risks obscurity. It frequently occurs. One report claims that one third of aspiring Korean celebrities have experienced molestation. A man named Young Suk Woo, an open world entertainment talent coach, was one of the worst violators. The man the business assigned to evaluate new hires and put them through boot camp was Young, who treated his budding talents as his own private harem. Young was accused of sexual assault by around 20 people, several of whom were kids. Young would often rape the females when they were unconscious, drugging their beverages. At other occasions, he would watch on CCTV as he gave the lads orders to hurt the girls. Thankfully, Young ended up going to prison. 33% of the women in Korean entertainment acknowledge that they have experienced such things, although the majority remain silent about it. The fact that every woman who brought a claim against Young was someone who had been rejected by the entertainment industry and never achieved the fame that they had been promised raises the possibility that, when a female becomes successful, she may have experienced all of this and has chosen to remain silent about it. 21. Bribery is rampant. Not all sales are genuine and not all fans are true. The sad reality of being an idol means you have to make money no matter what, so they do questionable things as a result. It is customary for an agency to arrange for a TV network to accept a bribe in order to have a new star's debut song played on the radio. It's just part of business in South Korea. Bribing, in the words of one CEO, is marketing. You get the greatest impact for the least amount of money. It has been proven that agencies have paid networks millions of dollars in exchange for airtime and plugs, and they typically get away with it. Only a few times has it gone to court, and then only when things get very out of hand, like the time a music executive entered a TV network's building carrying shopping bags full of crumpled money. In an attempt to defend it, one agent claimed that bribery and taking a client out to dinner are similar. He remarked, there are times when we drink with four or five guys and spend $3,300. We just give them $1,600 sometimes because we don't have time. 20. Blackmail What if your company doesn't have money to bribe powerful people? Managers have different tricks up their sleeves. K-pop celebrities occasionally earn enough money to break free from their contracts. They can rarely move on to a better deal, which is why many agencies withhold certain information about their stars. When a manager learned that one of his male clients was hiding his sexuality, he made the decision to turn the information against the client. He hired a man to entice the aspiring celebrity, concealed a camera in his house, and recorded their encounter in secret. Subsequently, he sent the young man's parents the video, threatening to make it public unless they paid him $500,000. Major K-pop artist Pak Ji Young's manager surreptitiously recorded her and used the footage as blackmail when she attempted to switch contracts. He released it online when she attempted to call his bluff, severely damaging her career for years. When Puck attempted to bring charges, the manager, Kim Suk Jin, left for the United States. He continued to be exactly as sleazy as he had been in South Korea for years. 
He was ultimately taken into custody after it was discovered that he had committed statutory rape. 19. Dangerous Anti-Fans With great power comes great responsibility, and with great idols come the worst haters. K-pop artists have more than just fans. Additionally, they have anti-fans, who essentially want them gone. These individuals typically merely post hurtful remarks on message boards, but occasionally they go a little farther. One person has succeeded in poisoning a star at least. Yoonho is a K-pop star who was brought to the emergency room when a fan put poisonous glue in his drink. Yoonho had trauma from the event. Years passed, he would later tell, before he could trust anyone. From what we've seen, the most vicious anti-fans are presumably those of Korean musician Daniel Lee, often known as Tablo, a group devoted to destroying his life has been formed. After claiming to have attended Stanford University, Lee received death threats from people who didn't believe him. Lee attempted to reassure them by presenting them with his master's degree and obtaining support from Stanford, but it was unsuccessful. A furious conspiracy emerged claiming that he had stolen the identity of a Stanford graduate. People would contact his mother. They would send him texts labeling him a liar and advising him to watch his back on the phone with her. For a while, he stopped making music because he was so afraid for his life. Although he has since returned, during his lowest points, he said that he had real concerns that someone would attempt to hurt his kids. He said to a reporter, To be honest, I'm damaged, and I don't know if I'll ever be better. 18. Sasang Fans What about delusional fans? When it comes to expressing their love for their idols, Sasang followers really go too far since they don't mind violating their privacy or doing horrible things to attract their attention. Jaejong of JYJ is an idol who has encountered a lot of terrifying Sasang fans. He was once napping in a sauna when a fan of Sasang decided to snap a photo of him. In addition, the admirer of Sasang boasted that she kissed him in the picture she uploaded online. Sasang have also resulted in injuries to idols. Heechul of Super Junior once shattered his leg as a result of Sasang fans. During his drive, some of his supporters began to follow his vehicle. Heechul ultimately tried to escape them by a number of different routes, but this ultimately led to an accident. 17. Taxi services help fans stalk K-pop stars. After overcoming all of this, should a singer succeed in becoming a celebrity, they will face a new challenge, the public. Hardcore K-pop fans do more than just create Angel Fire fan sites and send messages. Their prey is the stars. K-pop fans may rent a Sasang taxi for $100, which will follow their favorite stars wherever they go. It can become fatal at times. Super Junior's tour bus was crashed into by a bunch of fans and Sasang taxis that had followed the band too closely. They started a six-car crash that may have killed the band and permanently damaged the members' lives. 16. Trainee days are the worst. Does anyone know how long these people train to debut with groups? Some train for years, while others suffer for decades, unfortunately. Aspiring K-pop stars endure living conditions that are similar to slavery for the 10 years or more that they are learning their trade. It's standard procedure to forbid singers in training from dating or using cell phones. But over those years, they do more than just practice dancing and singing. They labor. Joe Kwan, a singer, revealed to the media that he had to do errands, clean the basement floor, and serve coffee for the executives while he was in boot camp. South Korea has been attempting to control the way these children are handled, yet even their recently passed progressive legislation is absurd by Western standards. Only in 2014 were the basic rights to learn, rest, and sleep promised to underage performers. According to the audacious new legislation, minors under the age of 15 may only be made to labor 35 hours each week. That is, assuming they are not on tour. There is a legal provision that allows agents to very much have kids work as much as they like if there is travel involved. However, kids must consent to all of this because they may be removed from their contract at any time. 15. Malicious Netizen 
K-pop idols aren't even safe in their own homes. We're not talking about stalkers this time. It's all about who's behind the screen. K-pop idols constantly have to deal with hateful internet users because they seem to get condemned for everything. Numerous celebrities have faced backlash from internet users for ridiculous reasons. Because Lisa is Thai, hostile netizens previously targeted her from Blackpink. Lisa received a lot of negative comments from online users who said that she was just an ordinary Thai woman who looked fantastic because of Korean makeup. Malicious internet users also condemned celebrities for dating, believing that such a relationship would hurt their fans. Some malevolent internet users attacked Kong Daniel and Twice's Jiho when they revealed they were dating. They attacked him for crushing the fantasy that idols convey to their fans and for dating just a few years after his debut. Plus, malicious internet users frequently make derogatory comments on idols' photos. Some idols have even undergone plastic surgery as a result of this. Words can truly hurt, so think first before you say anything. 14. Being duped by their employer it is common knowledge that K-pop businesses mistreat their idols, and numerous idols have experienced tragic circumstances as a result of their companies. Some stars, like Gugudan, have experienced betrayal from their corporations. Sally, a Gugudan member, revealed that their employer had instructed every student to vacate their dorm and never return. While it is true that the K-pop industry has faced scrutiny for its treatment of idols, it is essential to acknowledge that the situation varies among different agencies. Instances of mistreatment, such as stringent schedules, limited personal freedom, and intense pressure, have been reported by some idols. But it's also crucial to recognize that not all K-pop companies engage in such practices. 13. Worked to Exhaustion Do idols really live the best life? The hours don't get any easier once boot camp is over. It's said that K-pop idols are expected to work non-stop around the clock. Being an idol is a full-time job. Former group member Prince Mac stated, You could be working 20 hours or even a whole day. I've worked 20-hour shifts. I was shooting a variety TV show and that went on for 20 hours, no joke. Every day we average about three to four hours of sleep. Apart from that, it's all training or work. What about the biggest groups in the scene? Well, when BTS came to the United States in 2017 to embark on the late night show circuit, Chris Martin, who was spending time with the international sensation, saw firsthand how demanding this schedule was. When RM, the group's lead rapper, met with Martin, he was worn out. Although RM was said to have practiced with a bloody tissue in his nose, the wages of jet lag and constant hustle add up. He just carried out his assigned tasks as per his training. Members of BTS have acknowledged putting in up to 15 hours of effort in a single day. For idols, burning the candle at both ends can be a risky game, even if everything appears to be going well for them. K-pop celebrities have collapsed multiple times from tiredness, sometimes while performing live. It's totally scary. 12. Stars are at risk of eating disorders. Okay, we've talked about keeping up with their physical appearance, but it only gets worse from here on. Kim Hwan Ki, a Korean psychiatrist, claims that eating problems can result from the excessive diets of K-pop idols. In a commentary, Kim accused the media of promoting a strange sense of pride in being unhealthily underweight and glamorizing the unrealistic bodies of a few. Oh My Girls Jin E and solo artist Yu have both disclosed that they suffer from bulimia and anorexia, respectively. Neither girl has connected her illness to what she does for a living, though. When Oh My Girl made its debut in 2015, it was quickly becoming popular. Its single, Closer, was listed among the top 20 K-pop songs of that year on Billboard. Jin E, however, battled anorexia, which was made public that same year. She took a break from the group and eventually quit in 2017, opting to resume her ordinary life away from the K-pop void. I dreamed of becoming a singer for a long time, so I really wanted to do well. 
but I had physical and psychological difficulties, she wrote in a fan letter. Apart from her, you made the decision to talk about her personal struggles on a Healing Camp celebrity talk show episode, disclosing that she needed bulimia treatment. My heart felt empty, and I tried to fill the void with food, she stated. However, instead of feeling better, I became anxious and felt like I was lacking. I would eat until I threw up. 11. Struggling with mental health is stigmatized. The frontman of the well-known K-pop group Shiny, Kim Jong-un, better known by his professional moniker, Jong-un, committed suicide in December 2017. The performer talked about the extreme pressures of becoming a pop culture idol. Regretfully, Jong-un wasn't the only celebrity to give in to peer pressure. Kim Yong-ha, the author of I Have the Right to Destroy Myself, claims that suicide rates in South Korea increased following the Asian financial crisis in 1997 and have continued to rise ever since. His statement, Suicide is Everywhere, was in a 2014 New York Times article. Now, whenever I hear news that a young person has passed away, suicide is the first possibility that comes to mind. 10. Discrimination if you're an outsider, it might be hard for you to be accepted. Many idols know that. From Sydney to New York City, training facilities are springing up all over, signaling that the ever-ambitious K-pop business is welcoming international talent. Speaking many languages, idols frequently have to perform in various languages, with Japan proving to be an especially lucrative market. This implies that newcomers to the field from outside the country must quickly brush up on their language abilities, particularly in Korean. Shannon, a British Korean singer, received trolling after she sang the Korean national song during a baseball game. My mother is Korean and it shouldn't matter because I have Korean blood in me, she stated, but they kept calling me a foreigner. They wrote negative comments about me. Fei, a native of China and member of the female group Miss A also encountered detractors. When I first came to Korea, someone asked me if I only take a shower once a week. I was taken aback, she said. I shower every day. Why? Do you think Chinese people don't take showers? The person seriously thought that. I was surprised. 9. Boy and girl trainers should never eat together. Male and female trainees are kept completely apart by K-pop companies to ensure that their new hires are solely focused on their professional practice and to prevent the biggest teenage distraction of all from getting in the way. Romance. Blackpink's Rosé disclosed in 2017 on the chat show Radio Star that male and female trainees were not even permitted to greet or gaze at one another, much less be in the same room. Dinner hours would be rescheduled to accommodate that, and the managers of the females would watch to make sure no boys were hanging about or even obstruct any males who might be going by. How weird is that? 8. No dating. This doesn't come as a surprise after all that we've been talking about. Going steady is obviously not in the cards if shared meals are out, even after making your debut. The company that represents Twice and Got7, JYP Entertainment, is well known for upholding a rigorous no dating policy until three years after a singer first becomes well known. If you don't believe us, then see what the idols have to say. In a 2015 interview, founder Park Jin Young clarified the restriction, saying, it's only for three years. He had tweeted, after the debut, I advise them to not meet friends and only stay focused on practicing for three years. They are allowed to invite boyfriends over after that, and I would pay for their meal. Many people mention the three-year countdown, and JYP idols are frequently asked how many months remain till their third year ends. Wonder Girls made the hilarious announcement, Now we are free to date anybody, during their 2016 appearance on Radio Star. Please give us a call, send us a text, or do anything else if you're interested. Thank you. 7. No phones. It only goes downhill from here. It's also common knowledge that using a cell phone when distracted is not recommended. 
As per the statements made by numerous K-pop celebrities so far, it is common for singers to be denied access to their personal phones only following their victory in a music show. The girl group G-Friend said in the 2016 episode of Immortal Songs, Singing the Legend, that they had won a music show before they even owned a mobile phone. Tiffany Young, a solo performer for SNSD, also revealed on the Zack Sang show in 2018 that none of the project's participants had cell phones at first, so she had to go to a phone booth to make international calls to her parents back home in the US. 6. Slow progress So, is everything actually worth it? Although record firms are no longer requiring slave contracts, celebrities still risk negative reaction from their fan base. Specifically, the removal of the no dating rule ought to have given idols some measure of authority again. Rather, upon the clause's removal, fan clubs consolidated their own authority. A few fan clubs had threatened to boycott Super Junior if one of its members, Lee Sungman, was invited to make a comeback tour because of unresolved marital issues. Similar responses have been shown to other idols who have disclosed their relationships. As a result, the majority of these couples have broken up and apologized to their followers. The designation of idol carries with it the idea that your fan base and group should come before your personal needs, but no fan has the authority to control other people's lives. 5. Is this normal? Honestly, if we were in their places, we would faint too. Starving themselves and pushing their bodies to unhealthy physical limits is a common practice among K-pop idols. As a result, idols collapsing during a performance is not unusual. Our bodies can only endure so much without adequate sleep or nutrition. For these workaholic superstars, fainting is a very common event. Because the K-pop market is so cutthroat, there isn't much room for error, but these stars are human. Despite the fierce competition in the music business, artists still need to take care of themselves. Four. You can't avoid double standards. There will always be competition between each other, and sometimes it'll become too toxic. Industry insiders claim that rising female K-pop stars face severe harassment from male idols. One writer referred to the K-pop scene as a misogynistic playground. Etiquette standards heavily favor male pop stars, and a toxic work environment is maintained by the male-dominated executive ranks at management companies and studios. Written exposés regarding the gross double standard in K-pop exist. According to one writer, some K-pop ladies experience stigmatization from defamation and forced subjugation to authorities, but men's reputations tend to weather scandals better. 3. Girl groups' intense rivalries are encouraged by music agencies. Making friends is the hardest thing in the world for idols. It seems that K-pop girl groups' fierce rivalries are orchestrated by music companies. When the groups appear in public, managers allegedly cut off communication, urging them not to talk to girls who are beneath them. Despite their outward appearance of being put together and friendly, this is just a facade to maintain their idle position among the public. Although the girls appear to get along well behind the scenes, it's easy to envision how their long hours, stressful managers, and starvation diets might affect their relationships off camera. 2. Chart Manipulation Businesses When all else fails, this is where they go. Chart Manipulation or the act of manipulating chart places to give a music group an unfair advantage has become more common as K-pop has grown. The information and tools required to succeed on charts are being made available to those that don't deserve to be at the top of them. Both honest groups and the supporters may suffer greatly as a result of this. What they are doing is against the law, unjust, and immoral in the music industry. While the K-pop industry may appear to be a mysterious black box, many of its biggest hits are actually rather straightforward. The Korean music scene is being negatively impacted by the Satagi issue. Still, it's also starting an important discussion. More well-known musicians are coming out against the practice. In the digital age, experts are debating how to reevaluate music charts. 1. Pressure to maintain perfection 
Not everyone can do this, but we're forced to believe that K-pop idols have no flaws. K-pop performers are under constant pressure to be flawless both on and off the stage. They need to always appear their best, have perfect skin, and maintain a particular degree of physical fitness. Many artists report feeling they are under continual inspection, and this strain to achieve perfection may be quite daunting. The K-pop industry is heavily influenced by societal beauty expectations, as evidenced by the harsh criticism that idols who defy rigid beauty standards frequently face from online groups. Remember, they're also human. So treat them with kindness and support them with their work. Behind all the glitz and glamour, there's always an industry that continues to evolve. Now, we just presented you with the 30 most hard to swallow facts about K-pop. Which fact surprised you the most? If you're hungry for more content about K-pop or any other topic under the sun, be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell to stay updated with our latest videos. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching.